Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. This week, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite techniques. Now, I love to use molding paste or modeling paste. Depends on which brand you're using. It's the same thing. I tend to use um, Golden, which they call it molding paste. If you use Liquitex, they call it modeling paste. And what it does is it can veil an area, and that's why I'm going to be working over this painted surface rather than just putting it directly onto a white surface. And it can create some beautiful textures. Then I'm going to be showing you the iridescent bronze. And it's a particular paint, and this is the only paint that will do this. And it doesn't matter if you get heavy body, or if you use the fluid, because we're going to be diluting it with a lot of water. And it starts to break apart, as you'll see. So another paint will not do that. It has to be the golden iridescent bronze. There's a couple of other paints I've found that do similar things, but believe me, just stick with this one. So I'm going to begin with applying the molding paste, and I'm going to show you some really uh, fun ways to get texture. And what I've got here are some fabrics. This is a tray from a packaging of fruit or vegetables or something. Different kinds of fabric, lids, some burlap. These are little stencil waste, they call them. So, not stencil waste, but um, glitter waste. Scrim, I think is the name. Sequin waste, that's it. Thanks for bearing with me. And just various other tools for creating texture in the molding paste. So let me get it on. And one of the things that I want to show you is the thickness. So if I want to come in here with some of this fabric, I don't want a thick layer. So let's just... I'm going to show you how thin this is going to be. This is for what I call embossing. Now if I take, this is an embossed fabric. So you can see it's just fabric on one side and I think it's like a plastic foam or it's naugahyde. Now, do you see how it pulled up right in here? That means it's too thick. So, no worries. I just come back over here. I put it on a little thinner. I take some off. It's wanting to dry up on me pretty fast, so I just sprit it, spritzed a little bit of water on there. Let's try it again. And that's better. So I'm not getting that distortion of the pattern. I just had a line there, so I might just go over. Now you can clean this off so that you can use it again. Because if you leave it to dry on there, it'll start to get filled up with all the paste and you won't be able to get an embossing. Now, I'm going to put it on thicker. And show you some other ways. Sometimes I like to just come back in and do a little hit or miss, and so parts of it show through. Now, you could just use your knife and get texture like this. You don't have to use tools. And if I come back in here thin enough, you can see some of the patterns still coming through. Let's try this one. Because this is open, do you see how easily it creates that pattern? But again, it was pretty thick. So I'm going to kind of do another hit or miss. 
and then start to bring some of this down. Again, clean that off. This is like a burlap ribbon. It's not ribbon, but it came in a roll, and I got it at the floral department at the craft store. I think they used it in making bouquet decorations. And you see, I'm just tapping it with the knife. I'm just getting it little bits and pieces. When you overlap these textures like this, when somebody looks at it, they're not going to be able to say, oh, I recognize that's the vegetable bag, or that's this or the other. It's going to be layered, so it's going to be kind of unidentifiable. a little more in. And I don't have to cover every inch of this. Get a little diamond shape there. I can come in. This is just foam, packing foam. big circle. And a different size circle. If I can get it off. There we go. Okay, so you get the idea. So you want to get a lot of different kinds of textures on here. Then the hard part is, is you have to let it dry. And it's going to take it a while to dry, depending on how thick you've put your paste on. But I already made one, so let me move this stuff out of the way. Clean some of these pieces off. That one doesn't really need cleaning. And get this out of the way. So you want to just experiment with lots of different things that you have. This is even more packing material. It works really well for just putting uh, some dots in. You might see it show up in this one piece here. OK, you're going to want to use a plate or something that's going to be able to hold the water. And I'm going to be putting out iridescent bronze, fine it's called. This is the heavy body. And to make this, probably that's plenty because I'm going to add a lot of water to it. You notice I'm spraying the water over here. I've learned the hard way if I spray the water in there, it tends to want to splatter and go everywhere. Now I'll mix it together. You see it has this shimmer to it. And it's going to take it a few minutes before it starts to do the separation. But you see it's very fluid. So you want it about kind of a milky consistency. Now, this piece, I just want to point something out. I had a lot of things on the background of this piece, even some crackle back in here. You can see when the paste gets dry that it's a little bit translucent. I can still see some of these colors. Here where it's really thick, I can't. Let me just show you now. See how it's starting to separate out? You're seeing a green. Now if I mix it back together with my brush, I just start to pick it up and isn't that pretty how it separates out? So this is going to look like bronze with a green patina. And because I can see some of the 
background colors, it's going to change the, the color slightly. Whereas if I did this on a completely white canvas or board, I'm not going to get that same effect of the colors changing. Even here, there's not as much paste, and I'm going to let that color show through. I like that. See how much it's changing already? How green it is? Now here's the trick, is you have to leave it flat to dry. Don't be tilting it and, and rotating it and letting it run off because you're going to change that ratio and that separation. And once this dries, then I could come back and add some of the thicker, less diluted, thicker not meaning whether it's fluid or heavy body, but not diluted if I wanted to get more of the bronze on. But this is the, that's, mm, this is the order in which I like to do it, to get this patina like first and then to come back in and add more bronze in some areas. Let me just show you, if I just drop, oops, this one is separated. Let's mix it up again. There we go. Now this is going to be less diluted right in here and I'm going to go within that circle and we're going to see if it changes, which I know it will, but it'll still make a patina but not quite as much as out there. So that's another way you can control it. See how it's already changing in here? We might need to kind of zoom in there and really see it. Okay, I'm going to just scoot this over here and take this piece that is below it. And I want to show you the difference. This is light molding paste as opposed to the regular molding paste. And light molding paste is a lot more absorbent than the heavy or regular molding paste. And I just want to show you the difference in how it's going to change that paint. Not change it, but how it's going to hold it, I guess, a little differently. See, it doesn't move as much. Maybe it's because it's not as diluted. Let's just put a little water there. And that's another way you can do it. If you, if you put your paint on and nothing's happening, you might just need a little more water. You could just spray some water on or put it you know, on your brush and come in like this. It's a very forgiving process. Again, the fluid. And this time, I'm going to add a little bit of micaceous iron oxide. And it's got particles in it that is going to sit with this paint differently. It's actually little metallic particles. And we're going to mix that in. You could mix it in before you do this too, but I'm going to add some more water. I'll put these side by side. Look at how green this one has become. Even where I added more of that bronze, it's still changing. So as you watch paint dry, don't we just love to watch paint dry, and um, you might want to come back in and add a little bit more of the bronze there. Say, okay, well I want, I want more. Now I have probably have, I probably have a little of that micaceous iron 
on my brush. But I'm going to just kind of keep adding till I'm satisfied with the, the look I have. I'm going to let these dry. You see how much darker this one is? So these are all some various ways you can play with this idea of bronze. Now I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to work on them, finish at least one of them, and then show that to you in the uh, finished painting section. Because it's going to look quite different when it dries. And I may add more bronze. I may come back in with another color somewhere. And I will make a note of that when I show you the uh, finished piece. So it's probably going to take it you know, a couple of hours to fully dry. So we're not going to sit around and wait for that. But I'll, I'll share it with you later. And try doing the, the molding paste and the light molding paste. They're going to be very different. And I just want to let you know that after this video, we're going to be transitioning to a subscription service. So if you'd like to keep watching the videos, just click on the link below and you'll be able to find out more about how to subscribe to Mixed Media Soul Sparks. All 44 of the existing uh, videos will still be out there for you to watch. And thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.